Good afternoon, gentlemen. Now that we've emptied our silver cell and we've recovered our crystals, we have to wash our crystals. At this point, if our crystals are not clean, whenever we go to melt them in our dish, you will start to smell the nitric acid as it vaporizes off from the crystals in the dish. So what I'm going to do is I've got everything set up. We've got our pyrocrine dish. We have our crystals. We have our 1,000 milliliter flask. And we have our 9 centimeter Buckner funnel. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up your Buckner funnel here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to clean our crystals. Now first, I've taken two filter discs. Always use two filter discs. I've placed them in the bottom of the funnel. And I've wet them. I've just took a spray bottle and wet them. And what I want to do is I want to apply a vacuum at this point. And what I want to do is get a good seal of that filter paper against the bottom of that funnel. And the way that you do that is you wet it and you apply a vacuum and it will suck itself down to it. Now also, I need to point out, if I can find the stir stick here, what you want to do is you want to make sure you got a good seal against the bottom of that funnel there. And what you could do is you could take a round glass stirring rod, which I have here, and you can put it around the edge and just travel around that edge, molding that filter paper to the contour of the bottom of the funnel. Then come back and squirt it with a little water. And what that will do is that will seat your filter paper in there. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull our vacuum back off of our flask. We don't want vacuum at this point. These crystals will wash very well without vacuum. And we're just going to pour some of our silver crystals in there like you may. Pour about a half a funnel full, I guess. And we're just going to kind of shake it around there, tap the sides to get it to fall down. And now what we're going to do is I have my little heating apparatus back here. And if you don't have one of these, uh, you, you can boil it on the stove. It just takes longer. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug that up. And we're going to give that just a minute to warm up. And we're going to wash our crystals. And once we're done with our crystals, we're going to put them in our powder cream dish here. And we're going to put it on a hot plate for about 15 or 20 minutes to make sure that they're good and dry. Just like we've done with our cement powder in our first video. And as you can hear, our water is starting to warm up back there. Now, if we apply a vacuum at this point, all we're going to do is suck the water through there so quick that the water is not really going to have time to wash them. So we're just going to leave our vacuum off and we're going to pour the water in the top of our funnel and allow our crystals to sit in that hot water. The hotter the water, the more soluble any copper nitrate solution is going to be that's hanging on to these crystals. And the water is getting pretty close to reaching boiling. And we're boiling. So we're going to unplug that. We're going to take our water out. And we're just going to pour a funnel full of water. And allow our crystals to sit in there. And as you'll notice from gravity, it'll start to drip through the bottom just a little bit, just for the force of gravity. We don't have to apply any vacuum at this point. We just want them crystals to set in there and to warm up and to draw off any copper nitrate or silver nitrate that may still be trapped into crystals. And again, it's just slowly draining through the bottom of the funnel. Notice that the solution coming out is clear, which tells us we've done a good job. 
Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to take this rinse water that comes out of these crystals. There's still some residual silver nitrate, which means there's some silver still trapped in these crystals. You want to take this and add it to the cell solution that we just put in our stock pot so you can put a piece of copper in there and recover anything that also may be left in here. And now that it's had a chance to sit in there for a couple of minutes what we're going to do is we're just going to apply a vacuum and I want you to see just how quick that this drains. And, of course, our crystals again. Now, we want to take some more water, hot as possible, and pour in there with our crystals. Alright, let me get our little pot here hooked back up again. I hate having to do things one hand. And we'll pour some water in our little pot. Best little adventure that I ever run across is this soup warmer right here for warming water. And we're ready. Now one way that we could test, I'm sorry I don't have any ammonia here or I would show you a different demonstration. One way that we could test our silver nitrate solution, any residuals, to tell whenever our silver crystals are clean, you can take some of this solution that's coming out the bottom here and you could add a drop or two of ammonia to it. And if it immediately turns a blue color, then your silver crystals aren't clean enough. But I use that in a production environment. When I'm cleaning them in a Buckner funnel like this, usually two or three hot water rinses is more than enough to remove any residual nitrate that may be in there. And if there is just a tad bit, well, it'll vaporize off in our dish. We just don't want a lot in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply a vacuum again. We're going to drain all that off of our crystals. And we're going to go a third time. And we'll let that set there for just a second. And apply some vacuum. And we're going to let that sit there for just a second to finish draining. Now at this point you don't have to worry about all the residual moisture coming out of it like we did with our cemented silver. All we're going to do is try to get the most out of it that we can. And we're going to take it over to our power cream dish and we're going to dump our crystals in there. And we're going to repeat the same process again so I can finish up the rest of my crystals. And now at this point you have your clean silver crystals. We'll take these, put them on a hot plate, let them dry for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then I'm going to cut away and we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you how to prep a melting dish and melt this and pour this into pretty little bars. I'll see you gentlemen outside.
All right, gentlemen. Now that we've washed and dried all of our silver crystals, we're back to our melting station again. And a few items I have in front of me. I have a power cream dish with a little bit of water in the bottom of it. This can be a stainless bowl or anything else. Just so you can quench your bars once that you pour them. And also in front of me here, I have a small set of tweezers that I use for handling the bars once they're poured. We have our old melting dish that we use for melting our silver shot with, with some tongs. We have a couple of different type mold sizes. On the right you'll see a Kit Kat bar, the, the long oblong looking one. Uh, it's a two or a three ounce. And then on the left is a little mold that I use for pouring gold. I believe it's a one ounce, a half ounce, and a quarter ounce mold. And then we have our pyrocrine dish here with some of our silver that we've measured out in little white cups. And you can get them cups at Walmart for a dollar for a hundred of them. They come in handy for throwing shot in for pre-measuring one ounce bars, half ounce bars, however much you're trying to measure. Just so you can segregate the material and have it ready. We have our melting torch. Here we have a quartz silica melting dish. This is probably a two and a half inch dish. You can get these off of eBay for three or four dollars, nearly nothing. And you always want to start with a clean dish. We have worked so hard to get that silver purified to this stage. You don't want to use a dirty dish. Now once you start using in that dish for your silver crystals that's all you'll want to melt into it now eventually that dish may get dirty you don't have to throw it away you can use the same dish for melting your cemented silver in the future and of course I have two cups right here where I've already pre-measured one ounces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use them to demonstrate how this melts, how to glaze a dish, how your bars should look, and overall just how you should be able to pour some pretty bars. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut away for just a minute and I'm going to have somebody else take over the camera and I'm going to show you how to melt some silver bars and how to glaze your dish. Now one other thing that I'd like to point out is is for glazing on our dish we're using nothing more than 20 mule team borax this is pure borax is what this is you can find this at Walmart Art, or Dollar General for about dollar and a half two dollars a box grandmother used to put this in our laundry some people use it for bug control but it's 20 mule team borax and that's all you need to glaze your dish with so I'm going to cut away and we'll come back and we'll get started melting some silver. Alright gentlemen, we're back and what we're going to do now is we're going to learn how to glaze our dish. Now remember from my previous video, I told you you don't want to just go to throwing heat on this dish, they will crack. So you want to take your torch and you want to turn it on. get you some gas flowing there. Add you a little bit of oxygen. And you just want a little heat coming out of there. And then we just want to play it around on the surface of the dish. Now one of the problems that a lot of people have is they put too much glazing on this dish and it will tend to make your gold or your silver get stuck up in that flux. All you need is a light coating on this dish. You don't want to drop it all in the bottom of this dish. It's just a pool. You can't. You don't really want to just drop it in there and try to move it around. That's not going to work. You can't just put it in there like water and spill it around. You need to kind of coat the dish, and as you melt it, it will it will 
bond with the dish and spread out like wetting the surface of something with water. And if you'll notice our dish is starting to get hot and glow in places there and that's what we want. This borax tends to soak up moisture from the air so when we first apply it it's going to swell and puff up about like uh, instant potatoes I guess you would call it instant potato flakes but once we get our dish a little warm there Now what we're going to want to do at this point is we're going to want to take some borax and we're just going to lightly cover the bottom portion of that dish. So let me get this around here. We're just going to take a little bit and sprinkle it over the top and allow it to fall in there like that and give it a second to kind of dry up and then we're going to apply some heat to it. And just get the dish hot. You don't have to move it around. This stuff will move itself around. And we're going to apply just a little sprinkle more, not much, just a little sprinkle. Just let it fall off in there. And then we're going to take our dish and lightly tilt it sideways so we can get these edges. And especially right here around this lip area. And as you can see, it's just puffed and swelled up. And we're just going to take our heat again and apply it to the sides until it gets good and glowing red hot. And if any of y'all have ever seen polyurethane on uh, tables or wood floors, how shiny it is, that's what you're looking for when you're done with your dish. You're looking for a light glazing. It looks almost like clear ice. And again, I'm going to add just a little more around the edges. Just lightly sprinkling. You don't want pools of this stuff anywhere. And again, pay special attention to your lip area out here. come back and apply some heat and you gentlemen will have to excuse some of these shots if you wonder why it's kind of dark it's because it's night time and it was like a hundred something degrees here today and any of y'all that have ever sat over a torch knows how hot this torch gets so I decided to wait until the sun went down before I come out here and started messing with this hot but I believe you can get enough definition and detail out of the video that you can understand and see what I'm doing. And 
make sure we heat the bottom again good. Now when we add this silver to this dish, there is no need for no flux whatsoever. This is pure silver in a clean glazed dish. You don't need any flux. And if you do, you haven't done your job properly. Okay, let's kind of give that a second to cool there and I'll let you look at that dish. And if you'll notice, it is shiny all the way around that dish, just like it's got a coat of fresh poly, including the lip area right here. And if you'll notice, the bowl is still white. There's no metals in it. When we finish melting this pure silver, this dish should look just as good as it does now. This dish should last you for many, many uses, unless you melt something trashy in here. This should be only for your clean silver. You need a separate dish for your cemented silver. Now we're going to cut away for just a minute, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how to continue to melt your silver crystals. All right, gentlemen, we're back. And before you, I can show you how to melt this silver, I think I need to tell you a little bit about technique and the way that you need to melt it to get the best finish on your bar. Now what you see here is about a normal flame. And what we mean is the gas mixture and the oxygen mix mixture are just perfect so you have a neutral flame. Now, there's two other types of flames. There's a reducing flame and then there's an oxidizing flame. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some extra oxygen and I want you to notice where the blue at the tip of this goes to. Now what you hear is an oxidizing flame. Now, if we pour our silver with an oxidizing flame, silver has an infinity for oxygen when it's in a molten state. Now as the silver starts to cool off, it tries to give up and gas off this oxygen. And what's happening is the oxygen gets trapped on the surface of the silver bars as the bar cools and the oxygen tries to off gas. So whenever we pour our bar in order to get the smoothest finish possible, we want to use a reducing flame. And this is an oxidizing flame. This is about a normal flame, and a reducing flame is an overabundance of gas. And you'll have to play with it on your torch to get the setting right. You can go Google this on uh, Google and get the basic theory behind it. But when we go to pour it, we want to turn our oxygen down to where we have a reducing flame. That way, oxygen is not absorbed into the bar in a molten state and gassed off during its cooling process, which leads to a rough surface. Now, I'm going to give myself a little more oxygen here to get back up to a neutral flame. We're going to start preheating our dish here again. And it's still slightly warm for earlier. Now remember we do not want to pour this hot metal into a cold mold. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to heat up my graphite a little bit. And the reason that I'm going to do that is is because there's moisture in that graphite. And if I don't heat it and drive it off when I go to pour my silver into this cold mold, it will pop out. You do not want molten silver popped out and on your skin. Now, another thing, some people do it, I personally don't, but you can soot this mold. Now, this is graphite and you won't have a problem with it, with it sticking to the graphite, but most folks like to turn their oxygen down to where they're burning nothing but gas and carbon soot the mold is what you're trying to do. And I'll demonstrate here by doing the top of the mold a little bit. And you can see how the top of that mold has turned black from the soot. 
and I don't recommend using acetylene for for this. I don't recommend using acetylene for melting silver. It's a trashy gas. All you're doing is you're polluting your silver. I would use propane, map gas, propane and oxygen. Now that we've got our mold sooted, we just want to turn our gas back up to about a neutral flame and heat our dish again. And we already have a, an ounce of silver pre-measured over here that we could use for pouring into our dish for our melting experiment. And I'm going to go ahead and dump that in here. And we're just going to apply a little heat. And I want you to notice how easy these crystal silver, uh, these silver crystals start to melt. Got it a little closer. And as our silver starts to melt, it all gathers in the bottom of the dish. And you can just roll it around the side of your dish there to pick up any residual silver that you may have left in, in there. And we're going to heat our bar up just a little bit. Now what you want to do again is tip, keep the tip of your dish heated because as the silver goes over the side of the dish it has a tendency to freeze up on the dish. So we're going to bounce the flame off the lip of our dish while keeping our silver molten and our mold warm and then we're just going to tip that right up in there and keep the flame on top of it as it cools. And we're going to take a pair of channel locks, we're going to reach over here and grab our mold, and we're going to flip that bar up and let it come out in that dish. And voila! Now I don't know if you could tell, but right here on the side, that is flux. And there's a little flux over here and you don't want to rub these bars because you will scratch the surface. They're so fine and so shiny. So we're going to take this inside and we're going to put this in some dilute sulfuric acid to remove that. And I'll explain that to you in the next step. We'll go ahead and melt us a couple more bars while we're here. And again, our dish is already warm, so all we're going to do is pour our next silver into there. And we're going to heat them up.
allow our silver to become molten. If you look on top of the silver there, you can see a little bit of flux floating around and those are some oxides that have formed. It could be that we didn't get all of our nitrate solution out, but that's okay. Most of them are burned off here. That's what you see what that little bit of white smoke may be. And the rest are trapped in that little bit of flux on that surface area right there. And if you want to know the difference between your flame on your silver, you can see as I adjust this flame, how the surface of this silver reacts to it. I'm about to run out of gas. Maybe I can finish shooting this video for you gentlemen. And you want to move the silver around in the dish. Again, heating the tip as you warm the graphite mold. Tip it up into your mold and hold your flame on it as you allow it to cool. And that will stop the surface from having any oxygen that tries to escape and leads to a smoother finish. And again, our bar. You can see how shiny and pretty that is. Another piece of flux hung right there. But we'll get that off in a little bit. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to do one more half ounce pour here to show you gentlemen another demonstration. And then from there, we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you how to clean the bars of any flux that may be on them. Again, we want to get our mold up here and we want to get it ready so we're going to set it up here and we're going to pour a half ounce bar out of this so I'm going to go ahead and heat my mold to drive off any residual moisture and at this point if you want to you can set the mold Silver's trying to cool, so we're going to come back over here for a moment and hit it.
some mold up there again. Keep our silver in a liquid state over here. Silver tends to cool off quick, gold even quicker. And we're going to hold our dish up there while we're bouncing the flame off the dish and the bowl. And we're just going to tip that up. And voila! Now, if you don't like the way that one of your bars come out or something other, don't worry, while it's still hot before you dump it into the water, just grab it, just grab it and drop it like I am, and don't don't let your senses get the best of you and grab it graphite because it is hot. We're gonna grab this bar here again, and we're gonna throw it right back into our dish and just reply heat again to it. And it'll take it a second to get back into its molten state. Alright, now that we've got it molten again, I'm going to turn my oxygen back a little bit. Just enough to keep the silver molten. pour it right over that edge there. Keeping the flame on it as we allow it to cool. Now you can make all kinds of pretty ripples with these bars if you know what you're doing. If you pour it like I do and pull the flame off, it won't leave a smooth surface. It'll leave ripples in it like inside of a, a tree, like the rings inside of a tree. And you can get a good look at how pretty that bar right there looks. And like I said, don't rub it with a cloth. It's so smooth that it will scratch the surface of this very easily. And now, gentlemen, we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you how to clean any residual flux off this. Alright, gentlemen, we're back inside after having now melted our silver crystals from our cell into pretty little silver bars. And if you look here, they are nice and shiny. Now, if you haven't used too much flux, there shouldn't be any flux attached to these bars. Now, if you've just glazed your dish, you may have one or two little pearls of uh, flux that's attached to a bar or two. But what I'm fixing to do now is I'm going to show you how you can remove any flux or any oxides on the surface of these bars to give them even a shinier surface appearance. Now these bars are so shiny and reflective, if you was to rub them with a cloth, a cotton shirt or something, you would actually dull the surface of these bars. But we're going to place them in some 33% sulfuric acid. And you could get this at battery stores. This is nothing more than battery electrolyte. Now, we've used nitric acid previously in our videos, and we've seen you can get a little bit on your skin, and it's fairly harmless. Well, sulfuric, an uh, sulfuric acid is a little bit more of a different animal. Uh, you really don't want to get sulfuric acid on your skin or your clothes. And if you do, you want to wash it away very quickly. So I would rank sulfuric acid more dangerous to handle in my book than the nitric acid that we've already used. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that 33% battery acid electrolyte. And if you don't have any, don't take any out of a battery at home. That's already polluted. It's probably got lead and some other substances in it. And you're just going to trash your bars. 
If you'll go to AutoZone or Napa and just ask for battery electrolyte, they sell it by the court, which is for motorcycle and lawn and garden batteries, and they also sell it by the gallon. It's fairly cheap, and once you use this to clean your silver, you'll be able to save it and use it for future batches of silver. So, you know, it's not something that we're going to use a lot of. Go down to AutoZone or Napa and tell them you want, you know, a gallon of battery electrolyte. That will be 33% sulfuric acid. Now, what we'll do is we'll use we'll cut the sulfuric acid if you use a hundred milliliters of sulfuric acid you want to add a hundred milliliters of water and remember it's always important that we add the sulfuric acid to the water not the water to the acid sulfuric acid it has an affinity for water. It loves to absorb it and when it does it releases a lot of chemical in energy. So what you want to do is you want to figure out how much water and how much sulfuric acid it's going to take to cover your materials and then just use enough for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to place them in a beaker and we're going to add some sulfuric acid and we're going to see if we can clean them up even some more and I want to caution you uh, make sure you do this with old clothing if you get any of this sulfuric acid on you you won't notice it but three or four days from now you'll have holes in your clothes so make sure you wear the proper eye safety the proper hand safety and take all safety precautions you need to make sure you keep this animal off of you now again this ain't something you really got to do if you've done your job properly there should be no flux on them bars whatsoever hardly but I always do a last step clean up anyway plus this is the last segment in our video and we want to see just how pretty we can get our little bars so I'm going to cut away for a minute and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put these in a beaker and get some sulfuric acid ready and I'll see you gentlemen in a moment all right gentlemen we're back at our workstation and I have all my pretty little silver bars in my beaker now and you just don't want to drop these bars into these beakers because you will chip and crack them and that's about a thirty dollar beaker there so I tend not to try to crack too many of them and as you see we have all of our pretty little silver bars in the bottom of our beaker down there and I've already added a hundred milliliters of water to this solution. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my sulfuric acid. And I have it measured out over here. And it's nothing more than common battery electrolyte. And again, you don't want to try to get this stuff on your hands or in your eyes or anywhere else so wear some gloves and the proper safety precaution take this proper safety precautions now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slowly add this to this water and this generates its own heat is what it does so you want to go ahead and very slowly add that to your water and I'll have about 200 milliliters in here by the time I'm done and it's just enough to cover the top of the bars you don't wanna you don't wanna fill this beaker slap full when all you need is just this little bit down here at the bottom and that is warmed up quite a bit just from the chemical reaction of the water and the sulfuric and again you can see our bars down in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my watch glass up on top here and I'm going to turn this on to probably a high setting because I actually do want to boil the bars. I mean you don't want to hard boil them but you want to boil them to the point that you start to see bubbles come off the bottom of the beaker in the bar and then reduce it back just a little bit to a slow simmer you just want them to simmer in there for about a good 10-15 minutes and then we're going to cut it off and we're going to let it cool and we're going to come back all right gentlemen we're back again it's been about 30 minutes and our bars have been lightly 
simmering and also fluoric and water solution and let me see if I can get you a shot of just how pretty the bars are you'll see them when they come out in a minute but all right they sit in there about 30 minutes now what you want to do is turn this off at this point and give it about mm, 20 or 30 minutes to cool down and we're going to come back to it and take our bars out and clean them. Alright gentlemen, we're back. It's been about 30 minutes. Our solution has cooled a little bit. And what we have in front of us is I have a beaker full of just plain clean water. Over here we have our bars in the bottom of our beaker and we have our sulfuric acid that we use to clean our bars with. Now you want to wear hand protection and when you see me using hand protection <laughs> you can pretty well figure out it's serious. I do not like sulfuric acid. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach in here and we're going to grab these bars. You can get you some tweezers or something plastic and the reason that I'm not going to try to pour the liquid off this is these bars will fall down and clang and break this beaker or they will wind up tumbling over each other and beat each other to death. Now these bars are pretty and shiny the way they are. Don't try to rub them with a cloth to dry them. You will dull the image that's in the bars and they will not be shiny like they are anymore. You don't want to pat them, you don't want to rub them, you don't want to bang them around. Unless, of course, you want to, they're your bars, you can do with them what you want to. But if you want to keep them pretty and shiny, try not to rough them up. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take our tongs and we're going to reach down in the bottom of the beaker and we're going to try to grab a bar by its side. And we're just going to put it in the water and rinse it off. And then we're just going to lay it on a cotton towel over here to dry. Then we're going to come back to our baker. <clears throat> we're going to remove another bar by pinching it. We're going to dip it in clean water to wash it off. And we're going to lay it back here on our cotton towel. And we're going to repeat this process over and over until we've removed our silver bars from our beaker. And then you can take the sulfuric acid solution that's diluted down in this beaker and wait for it to cool. You can take a funnel and I pour mine into a Pepsi or a Mountain Dew bottle just like the soft drinks come in. They're PTFE and they're made to withstand the acid so that diluted sulfuric is not going to hurt it. And you can save that acid till the next set of bars you get ready to clean and you can use that, you can recycle that acid several times before it gets trashy and dirty. And we're just going to keep grabbing and dipping. And I probably have about 30 or 40 bars in here. And once I finish cleaning these bars up, I have some more over there that I've already cleaned up that I'm going to go over and show you gentlemen. So we're going to cut away here and finish cleaning up our silver bars and I'll see you gentlemen in a moment. Alright gentlemen, we're back and I've got some of my silver bars laid out here in front of me that I've poured and that I've cleaned here and I just wanted to give you a shot of a few of them I've poured these in uh, half ounce bars for a customer that wanted them and I have an anode candlestick laying in the background there that I cast earlier also but you can see how pure and shiny our silver bars are at this point And we've come a long way and worked hard just to get to this point. And I'm going to see if I can get some of the texture of these bars. Because they're so shiny, they're hard to shoot. 
but you could see the texture and the ripples and the shininess in these bars. And that, gentlemen, is what is possible with a little bit of knowledge and the right tools. And we come to the end of a long journey. Now, though this is the end of the process, there'll be many more ahead of us, I'm mighty sure. I appreciate y'all bearing with me through these videos and through my stuttering. For the ones of y'all that don't know, I'm a recovering cancer patient. I've retired from refining and I do some teaching and consulting now. I'm still a gold refiner, so if any of y'all have any carrot gold or gold filled jewelry that you need refined then I'm probably your man but I retired because I had cancer and after the radiation treatments and after all the medicine they pumped inside of me it's hard for me to articulate what's in my head sometimes and of course it don't help that I'm from the south in Alabama and I have this crazy drawl about myself but I think that I've pretty much showed through these processes and through these videos that anybody can refine their own silver. It just takes someone giving you the right information and showing you the right processes on how to do this. Now you've seen me demonstrate this throughout this whole video so you know that these processes are possible. And I'm not sure if you've ordered just my DVD series or my kit. I really don't sell just a DVD series. This is actually meant as an add-on to the gold refining and consulting course that I offer. I really don't make these available to the general public, but I've had so many people ask me about refining their own silver that I finally just decided to go ahead and make a DVD series and to go ahead and release that to the general public. And one more thing before I go, I haven't told you all about the waste disposal issue. Well, there's kind of a reason I haven't. I've made some DVDs in the past and believe it or not, I actually have legal counsel that helps me with my company and certain legal issues. And I like to have gotten some trouble here a while back for giving some uh, advice that I guess the government felt that it wasn't my you know, advice to give. So for your waste disposal issues, the only thing that I could recommend is that you dispose of them in an environmental friendly manner. And if you want to know how to deal with them, I can't give you that legal advice, but go over and Google uh, waste disposal copper nitrate. And it's a pretty simple solution how you dispose of your waste materials. Now, don't just dump them on the ground. That's illegal also. You know, it's funny. It's illegal that I can't tell you what to do with it. But then again, it's illegal for you to do something with it. So, but I can tell you if you'll go Google copper nitrate disposal or waste disposal, so you'll find out how to safely dispose of this waste very easily. Some of it even using the same filtering processes that I've always already taught you in this video. So I guess I'll leave you now. Uh, 
I'll probably come up with some uh, pointers or things that I'm going to add into this DVD that I'll add into it past this point. So I'll probably be back after I review the DVD and come back with some pointers for you gentlemen. If not, it's been a pleasure teaching you. I hope you've learned something and I hope you've produced some pretty silver. And if you have any problems along the way, you have my contact information. Please feel free to contact me and I'll see if I can help you in any which way that I can. But like I said, I believe I've laid these processes out so simple and I've given you all the proper equipment and tools and numbers and calculations and everything else that I could think of. You should be producing three nine fine silver in no time. Thank you, gentlemen.